Community health nursing is nursing that is focused on the population. Join me in this video as I give a brief overview of what it means to be a community health nurse. Welcome to CASRN, where I teach you about all things nursing. Community health nurses focus on the health and well-being of a specific community or population. I'm sure you could derive that from the name. A community or population is very expansive, so is community health nursing. You've seen this more often than you think you have. The community health or public health is something that we see daily, such as in bathrooms where you see signs that say wash your hands, or billboards that say wear your seat belts, or ads on TV talking about the harmful effects of tobacco. So a population or a community focused nursing. Community health nursing started in the late 1700s and the early 1800s, but the principles can be traced back further than that. The Romans utilized the same principles 2000 years ago. The most famous public health nurse and notably the most famous nurse ever would probably be Florence Nightingale. During the Crimean War, she kept a very neat and tidy records such as called epidemiology, and noticed that men were dying from poor nutrition and communicable diseases. She basically invented the windshield survey. So she advocated tirelessly for her patients and saved a lot of lives by changing policies, improving nutrition, cleaning the kitchen, and sanitizing the hospital. Nurses who work in the community are going to work. They're going to work in the health department, community centers, community clinics, home health, and government programs such as the CDC or WIC, in schools, in the workplace, and notably my favorite place is international health. So you may work in these actual places, but care is frequently given in the community, such as going out into schools, going to health fairs, and helping people in the workplace. The knowledge base that a community health nurse has to have is going to be focused on some different areas rather than hospital nursing. So they're going to focus on health promotion, which is, as it says, promoting health, disease prevention. So this is where you want to prevent any kind of disease from being a problem. Epidemiology, which is the study of disease and nursing theories. So each of these areas are quite expansive on their own, and I'll make additional vid videos to cover these more in detail later. But health promotion, disease prevention, and epidemiology are essentially promoting health in the community through community health principles. And the community health principles are theories that and steps that a nurse can take in order to help a community or an individual make a behavior change. Those principles of community health include ethics, as does all nursing, advocacy, which is advocating for your client or community, implementing evidence-based programs, and collaborating and communicating with stakeholders in the community. So let's go over a few vocabulary words that are going to be important to understand with community health nursing. Now these words are not going to cover everything that you need to know, but this is a good place to start and will give you a base to build foundation for future videos. Advocacy is public support or recommendation of a particular cause or policy. So a public health nurse might actually go to the health department or go to legislature and say we need to implement this change because of the problems that are happening inside our community. So this is going to be recognizing the needs of the community and helping the community make those changes which is sometimes through policy and law reform. Aggregate is a specific population inside of a community. So you might be focusing on just women or just men or any other sub part of a community, but it is a grouping of people who do have something in common inside that community. Assessment is using proven tools to identify and monitor health problems or concerns in a community. So this might be something like a windshield survey, which is where you're gonna go out into the community and just drive around and see what's going on. Or this might be something like gathering data and doing an assessment from information that the CDC or the health department has. 
So you want, again, just like all nursing, we do an assessment, but rather than doing it on an individual person, we're doing it on an entire community. A client is the, what we call, sometimes call the target population or the aggregate in which the nurse is focusing their attention. The community is a group of individuals that share geographic, civil, or social parameters. So this can be people of the same religion, people of the same ethnic background, people who are in the same period of life, such as young parents or retirees. Now, when we talk about education, a lot of us understand what that is, but in the public health realm or community health realm, education is, pre is preventing and nurses will provide a lot of education in order to prevent, promote, and maintain health. So this is often done by programs and learning theories. Environmental health is how an environment surroundings affect a community and affect those health outcomes of that community. Epidemiology is a study of health related trends in a community in order to reduce or prevent disease. Now there's this thing called an epidemiological triangle and if you visualize a triangle that has three points, it's going to be the agent, the host, and the environment. Those are our three points. Now the agent is something that causes disease. This can be a physical, chemical, or infectious agent. The host is the living being that's affected by that agent. And then the environment is the setting or the surroundings around that. And those are three parts of epidemiology. So rep remember the epidemiological triangle. Ethics is preventing harm or doing no harm and promoting good and recognizing the rights of individuals and communities, which can also be very challenging in the community health spectrum. A current event around this is going to be the COVID vaccine. Uh, people in public health are promoting the vaccine. They want people to get it because they believe it's going to be a benefit to the community. However, it's important to realize that people have autonomy and recognizing it and walking that fine line in understanding who can do what. Evidence-based practice is a combination of professional expertise, research, community perspective, and implementation to achieve healthy outcomes. So basically, this just means it's a specific practice or program that's been proven to be effective through science. This is a very rigorous process and it takes years to accomplish. So some, just because something says it's evidence-based doesn't necessarily mean that it is. But for example, one of the things that we know is evidence-based is immunizations and vaccines. We know that they work through rigorous practice and research versus a health smoothie or something like that that you might see on TV, that's not going to be something that's evidence-based because it hasn't been around for a long time. It hasn't been researched. It hasn't had studies done on it to prove effectiveness. Health determinants are factors that influence health, like stress, finances, nutrition, education, social status, and healthcare access. Indicators of health are going to be things like mortality rates, disease prevalence, physical activity, obesity, and tobacco and substance use. Networking is where you get the stakeholders in the community to participate together in promoting health and disease prevention. There's a lot of public health programs out there that will collaborate with members of the community. So a stakeholder is a member of the community who has some pull or some interest in what's going on in the community and it's networking with them and getting them behind making these changes in the community in order to promote health. Policy is laws and practice that are in place in order to promote health and safety in a population. So this is going to be things like no smoking in public buildings or having to wear your seat belt or you'll get a ticket. You'll see lots of billboards that go into this, but there's certainly things that have gone into our communities in order to keep our communities safe and healthy. Prevention has three parts to it. We have primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention. I can almost guarantee that this will be a test question at some point in your nursing career. So we've got primary prevention, which is an intervention before a negative outcome. So this is going to be never using tobacco, never drinking and driving, eating good nutrition, exercising, etc. Secondary prevention is early screenings 
to identify before a person has signs or symptoms. So if you think of secondary is before signs and symptoms, which means they already have the disease. It's already there, but we're getting it early. So remember that primary is before you get the disease. Secondary is catching it before you have signs and symptoms of the disease. So this is going to be things like health fairs, getting blood work done, checking vital signs, getting a mammogram, getting a colonoscopy, those kinds of things. Now tertiary is managing a disease to prevent progression and further damage. So this person already has the disease, they already have signs and symptoms of the disease, but we're intervening with them so that it can reduce the damage done to the body by that disease. So, so this would be things like high blood pressure medication, insulin and injections and diabetic oral medications, chemotherapy if someone has cancer. So remember, primary, secondary, and tertiary, very, very important. Make sure that you understand that as far as prevention goes. One of the biggest parts of community health is doing program planning because it involves so much primary and secondary prevention. So this is going to be developing and implementing a program to address a health need in the community. Research and data is information about health that usually comes from studies that are done on populations. There are many, and we aren't going to go into all of them, but just it's important to look at the studies critically, making sure that the number of the participants, the bias, and the type. Double-blind studies are the gold standard. Now, I already briefly went over a stakeholder, but a stakeholder is somebody in the community that's involved and has a stake on the well-being of that community. So let's just review really quick what we touched on Remember, now this is just an introduction to community health and there will be much more to follow. But community health nursing focuses on the health needs of a specific population. The majority of the work is done in the actual community, such as going into schools and churches and community centers. The principles include ethics, networking, and evidence-based practice. Thanks for tuning in. Please help me grow my channel by clicking subscribe and follow below. 